Right. Edwina Curry. Mm, that was a party as well. Where was the party, can you remember? In London. Right. What happened? Put yourself back, put your mind back to that party, get the picture in your head, and tell us who was there. First. Tell us who was there first. I'm not fucking names. Was Edwina Curry there? She was, she was definitely there, yeah. Right. Was John Major there? Mm, yeah, there was quite a few MPs there. Right, quite a few MPs at this party. Mm -hmm. Now just tell us what happened between you See, and there's Edwina so many Curry. parties and so many different things. I was yeah. trying to get the right one in my... Just do that one. Tell us about Edwina Curry. What did she do? What, what, what did she do? I had sex with her because she made me a couple of <laughs> <laughs> I'm on benefits. What more can you take off me? You want my pants? You fucking like that? You like that? Put them on your face and fucking sniff the arse out of them, you cunt. Yeah, but couldn't they, couldn't they, um, couldn't they sort of say, right, he's not sick anymore, and just say no more sick benefits? Dr. Zubair was my doctor. He'd been my doctor since 2010. Oh, I was under no impression that he was going anywhere. He never oh, said anything to me as okay. my GP. Yeah. And I, I, he knew me quite well, mm -hmm. right? And I was getting somewhere with him. Okay. Now, what happened was I got pulled into the middle of the phone hacking trial, okay. which is why I bought this here, to show her just the proof mm -hmm. so that she can see that I'm not talking rubbish, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Now, part of where I've been pulled into the phone hacking uh, uh, proceedings. Mm -hmm. They want to know, because I'm trying to bring stuff from 2002, which is evidence of actual phone tapping, mm -hmm. they tried to stop my claim by saying you had six years to bring a claim. Mm -hmm. and it's like, well, I didn't find out about phone hacking until 2012. Mm -hmm. And I'm a protected party because I'm in a special support group. I've been under the mental health group yes. for quite a while now, yeah. as, you're, as, you're, yeah. as you're aware. Mm -hmm. And what I'm seeing the court do is say that I have capacity to bring my own claim when Dr. Zubair clearly filled out the form that stated he doesn't. He doesn't, and yeah, that's I what really appreciate it. And that's what the now, court now asked Now I'm for. the picture, because thank you very much for giving me this all information. Yeah, yeah. So what happened was, I think it was your partner who emailed me, and yeah. she asked me to book you an appointment. She said, yeah. you receive a letter about yeah. this DW report and you are feeling very stressed, yeah. because while you receive this letter, so I explained her that we got this DW report, so you want to yeah. fill it. As soon as possible, so it's not going to affect your. Yeah, yeah, I uh, understand that. Yeah. And, I'm, I'm and then to she, that. in the sa same email, where she said she said that because Dr. Zubair was your GP, you are very very comfortable yeah. with him. I was, yeah. Yeah. So she said that is there any chance if I could provide her the details where he is at the moment? Yeah. And luckily he is not very far. Yeah, so he's I, in Leytonstone. He is in Leytonstone. Yeah. And I just uh, I really liked him. He was really yeah, out of all of the doctors I've yeah, ever spoken it's, it's, to. It, that's why I said he was you know, right. You know exactly. It's, it's kind of a, the personalities and they are the same frequencies. I'm not saying I don't like no, you. I don't exactly. need to be offended. No, 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 It's the same, yeah, yeah, and, and, and it's worse. Yeah, have a sec. Yeah, um, my practice manager spoke to me. She said, um, I was just a little bit worried about, um, she said something about, like, you feel the police? Oh, I don't know. I bought, it with, I bought it with me, if I like, because... But, but, but if it's something about the police are trying to kill you? Or are they going to kill you? Not, not the police, Murdoch, Rupert Murdoch. It turns out that I've got phone tapping evidence from when the News of the World done a sting operation on me in 2002. They set me up, they tried to make me look like a cocaine dealer. Mm -hmm. right? I was a pop star, sung songs, I'm not no coke dealer. Mm -hmm. right? They got involved in my, in my divorce with my wife, they set me up, done a sting operation on me, 
Um, I was in prison for 56 days because if you believe the story that went out, it looks like I breached a non-molestation order, which I didn't. I've got all the paperwork, all the correspondence, I've got everything. Um, I've got all of the journalist police witness statements from 2002, and one of them is the journalist which is on the Millie Dowler story. I don't know if you're aware of that, the girl that was killed, the 13 year old girl. Yeah, they, they, which they is bugged, what's, bugged their phone or something. Well, what happened? I, I mean, uh, Glenn, Glenn Mulcair has been in my house, so I, I'll tell you what's happened oh, yes, there and, yes. and why it involves me. Mm. She was hacked the same month as me, basically. Yeah. Now, Scotland Yard released the Mulcair notes to me. They gave me page 58 and they gave me page 60, and they never gave me page 59, which was strange to start with. Yeah. And um, the reason that this comes about. I think they got the wrong door, these people. Yeah, actually. it happened earlier. The, 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 so, try and cut a long story yeah, short yeah. for you. Is um, the same solicitor that won my case mm. against the News of the World in 2003 in the criminal trial came back to me in 2012. You know, I told him, I said, look, you know, is there legs in this because I'm, I'm at the doctor's and I don't, I, I don't really need this. And he said, yeah, there's definitely legs in it. He said, this is millions, this is a slam dunk case. And I said, right, what do you need from me? They've sent me someone who won my case against them, but he's secretly working for them because he's had phone tapping evidence against them since 2002 when he won my case for me, yeah? So the same guy comes back to me in 2012 says to me, you've got a good case here. Basically, do I want to give him the authority to go to the Met? The, the, this is the lawyer? The lawyer. His name is Richard Mallett, and I've contacted the Solicitor's Regulation Authority. I've done all this yesterday, right? He contacted me in 2012. Basically, he was secretly working for them. I weren't to know that. Murdoch? Uh, yeah, News of the World Murdoch. News International, now known as News UK. Yeah. And, obviously, he won my case against them, and he had evidence of phone tapping in 2002 and I got not guilty and I was found not guilty the next day I got not guilty they printed guilty so we fast forward to 2012 Richard Mallett says to me I think you've got a good case here this is not guilty in a molestation no, not, no not guilty on the possession and supply in a class A controlled drug which was to do with the sting operation so the police arrested you charged you with that yeah and you were found not guilty. And I was found not guilty a year later in the criminal trial in 2003, which okay. the solicitor that won my case, his name's Richard Mallett, he comes back to me 10 years later, nearly 10 years to the day, and secretly he's working for the news of the world. I don't know this at this time. Mm. Right? All he wants is my authority to go to Scotland Yard to have the mole care notes released into his possession, and then he's saying to me, don't forget, I've still got all the evidence from 2002, all the proof, all the transcripts, all of the call data. Um, he said, this is a slam dunk case, this is worth millions. So obviously, I give him the authority to go to the Met. Since then, until now, he was covering up the 2002 bundle because the, n the number on the page, top page of Glenn Mulcair's notes that were released to me, page 60, note for Neville, Neville Furlbeck, that is, um, second of the fifth O two. Robert Kellaway, who was the head journalist on the Sting operation years ago, he's tra I've got all the correspondence between him and the police. He sends the police an email. I'm transcribing all of the recordings. Brian Harvey's call to this person, and then that one and that one. I transcribed them on the second of the fifth O two. So obviously, this is what the, this is the story. The head journalist on the Sting operation, he's got a sidekick. His name's Comrade Brown. Comrade Brown only works with the fake shake. So I've now connected the fake shake to Glenn Mulcair and my life's been in danger for five years, to cut a long story short. From who, though? Who From are... Murdoch, right? And I'm talking... Look, I don't think you understand, right? You see this bundle here? Yeah? Mm. This is Brian Harvey versus News Group Newspapers Limited. We amended the claim. When we amended the claim, some strange shit started going on. They got... Dr zubair has gone... He, he was the one that filled out the form that told the court, because they was abusing me, right, because of the evidence I've got, cut a long story short, he knew me, he knew my situation, he knew my condition, he filled out the required paperwork for the court, mm -hmm. Brian Harvey lacks the capacity to bring this claim himself, I should have been a protected party from day one, the solicitor who represented me, who came back to me, he filed all my medical evidence in 2002, the psychiatrist reports, there's um, th there's loads. It goes all the way back to 1997. But the psychiatrist reports. What did they say about that? About you? What the the last one? Mm. Right. Her name. It was the Ferguson Centre, mm. 
Um, she was an African lady, Mabaduki or someone. She really had the complete wrong attitude. I took that same bundle into her. Yeah. And basically, she let slip that the court had called her. So, okay. She let slip, because I put it on her. We started getting into a row. And, uh, and I said, the court have called you. And first of all, she said no, but then she said yes. And I recorded that conversation. Mm. Right? And um, so the court, because of their power, and I know how this sounds, I know for a fact Rupert Murdoch can pick the phone up and call the Attorney General. It doesn't matter what type of case I bring. It doesn't matter if John Alford from London's Burning gives me 250 grand to bring a private criminal prosecution. Murdoch can pick up the phone to the Attorney General, take over the case and stop it. There's no way forward, right? And I'm fighting these people full on. If you Google me, you'll see me outside Downing Street with that same ring binder in my hand, screaming for Cameron to come outside. That's, the lawyer, that's their new solicitors, Rupert Murdoch's. And that's them giving me correspondence saying that they've changed solicitors. Uh, call data. The police should have arrested them. They should never have arrested me. The police were in on it as well because they knew my telephone conversation was recorded. There it is, look. All itemised. This is the evidence. You, do, you, you, you don't think... You see, I have to look at what I have to look at, isn't it? and it may sound... Please look at it. Please look at it. It's not a delusion. It, that's what I have to make sure, that you're not having a delusion. Well, there's you're not a, getting there's paranoid. A, no, I'm not getting paranoid. I know how it sounds when I say this to you, right? Mm. And no one's ever going to come out and say to you, yes, we, we want to kill him. Right? But have when, there been any attempts? Uh, you, I've had death threats. Evidence? I've got it on tape from people that were working with him, leading me down a garden path to set me up to discredit me because I've got this. And this. This yeah, is why my is, life's in this danger. Is, this is all the interviews. Yes. So have you been to the police about this? Of course I have. They brought me into it. Mm. And what did the police say when you said people are... I went anymore? back and I've had a long argument with Operation Wheaton. His name's DS Elwell. And I said, the solicitor's been hiding all the paperwork from you. Okay, yeah. I said, the Leveson inquiry's been lied to. Mm -hmm. The head journalist on my sting operation said he knew nothing about Millie Dalla, right? And her phone being hacked and accessed. I've got his police witness statement from the same month that he says that. I completely contradict their whole story. Rebecca Brooks, she knew. I've got paperwork in here that indicates she made a quote on my case in 2002. She tried to tell everyone she knew nothing about it until 2011. Do you understand what I'm saying? This is real, mate. But when you go to the police and tell them that, you know... The you police are in on it. Mm. Please understand that. Do you, look, do you know why the police are in on it? There's why. Look, I'm sorry at, like, at how it comes across, yeah? I really am sorry for that, but... I'm sorry, the truth is the truth, and someone's going to take this on board. Because the police, this is their paperwork, that's the arresting officer, what they've taken on, telephone conversation between Brian Harvey and Kamal Zorba, and taken on... Yeah, who's Kamal Zorba? He's the guy that set me up. They paid him 15 grand to set me up in 2002 and say so I supplied him coke when I didn't. He's part of Mazma Mahmood's team, I've just found out, from Peter Dukes, who live-tweeted the whole trial. The fake shake. Yes, the fake shake is involved in this, right? So what I'm saying to you is, if you should just take that one document now, that proves the police knew I was recorded, and what should have happened is they should have said, well, this is all rubbish, we're nicking you for interception of communications, a breach of the RIPA 2000. And the problem is, is I've got interception of communications, actual proof of phone tapping, which means the CPS knew... So have you been to a different solicitor? No one will touch me. I've been to Mark Lewis, the top solicitor on the phone hacking thing, right? It's a closed shop. I've gone to Siobhan Egan, John Alford's solicitor, right? Uh, from London's Burning, right? It's a closed shop. Richard Mallet, the guy that was setting me up, he's moved from Wisbeach when he represented me in 2002. Now he's in the old Bailey. He's had phone tapping evidence, all of this since 2002 against Murdoch. So they got me not guilty back in the day, and then they went, right, that's it, get rid of him, not guilty. But Mallet still had all of this. And because of that, they took him on. And that's why they sent him to me in 2012, because they sent me someone I was going to trust, right? Because he won my case against them. No, wait, let me finish, please. Right? Because he won my case against them. And all he needed was my authority to say, yeah, yeah Richard, you can go to uh, the Met on my behalf and get the Mulcair notes released to Malik's solicitors. Got me? Mm. Once he, had, he legally, officially got them notes released to him, he knew what not to send me from the 2002 bundle that corresponded with the Glenn Mulcair date on page 60. Do you follow? That's it. I've got to write all this down so that... Good luck. <laughs>
Do you have any thoughts of harming yourself at the moment? No, no, no. Nothing no, like no, that? No, no, I'm not suicidal. So, sorry I'm, to ask you this, but do you hear any voices? No, no, I don't else? hear any voices. I've had schizophrenia, I've never had anything like that. All right, okay, I just need to document all this. Yeah, no, I've had, I've had two or three suicide attempts through pills, mm. and that is all done to the same thing. What we're, we're talking about Murdoch's media. And, I've been, and, and you've been to the police and they just ignore you? I've been to the police. The police, if anything, the police brought me into it. Do you understand? Like with having the notes and, and having me there as right, this is one of the people that we're gonna have to get this case sorted. Richard Mallet is in with Scotland Yard and uh, Scotland Yard, do you understand what I'm saying? Which is why he already knew what was on the notes and they played a tactical game and sent him to me because I'm gonna trust him. Because he won my case against them ten years prior. Why would I not? And plus I'm on benefits and he tells me, and this is a slam dunk case, it is millions, and this is what the problem is. But when they pay me, they've also got to accept liability for phone tapping, and I can prove the fake shape was in collusion. What, what, and the phone, your phone was tapped? Phone was tapped, uh, and uh, not only tapped, I've got, the, there's two sides, you've got the civil claim, right? The Glen Mulcair, where they're doing the settlements, I'm in that. I've been abandoned by this solicitor halfway through the trial because I confronted him and said, you've been hiding all this. What you've been doing? I confronted him, he ran away. Then the judge in the case tried to walk me down a path and say, so you've got rid of Richard Mallet? I said, no, because that changes everything to do with costs and everything else, right? I said, no, he's abandoned me. And now my, I've got a Mackenzie friend here helping me. You're making it hard for him to talk. Mate, I'm gonna be honest with you. I called the judge a cunt, right? Yeah. And, I, and, and, and Murdoch solicitors, because the judge is sitting again, oh, I can't see harassment pleaded on the claim. It's on clause two. Even Murdoch solicitors got up and said, it is pleaded, Your Honor. They're ruining me in there, and I should be a protected party, and I'm not. And Richard Mallet knows I should be a protected party because you filed all my medical evidence back in 2002, and, and, and you know that this has been going on with me since 1997. Yeah, but you know what you said, that Dr. Zabir has got... Dr. Zabir left because of other reasons. Well, I've then, I've, I've, then I apologise, I'm wrong. But yeah. I know for a fact that they meddled with the outcome of my... Um, you, you may well be right. They that, did, but, they but, did, they no, did, no, no, you I, know, I, and I said, they called, they said, do you know what they said? It's very easy to tie this one to me. Delusional disorder, harmful use of cannabis. And funny enough... And my, are you taking anything like that? No, my notes on your computer, right, my notes on your computer go back to 2005. Mm. That is very convenient for the news of the world. They so should they go. They should like go all the way back. They should go all the way so, back so, so, to nineteen. So, so they made it look like you had some sort of psychosis from taking illicit drugs. No, because they. Do, well, I think what it is is it's a tactical game. Because for some reason, under if they give me a diagnosis of delusional disorder, right? Well, you still lack capacity to bring a claim if you're delusional, surely. Mm. But in their world, that is easier to to to, to get round than me being totally lack of capacity. They played a tactical game, yeah. right? I said I lack capacity, right? Then they, they tried to get their own, so yeah, they yeah. tried to get their own psychiatrist, yeah. right? They went, they've gone down all these but roads, but and then when they- you not taking any cannabis? No, pain, hair, no, 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 man, no. You, you, know, you know there's a letter in here from the mental health team, you know the access team, the Ferguson Centre we're talking about, yeah. and they put down that you had a delusional disorder, harmful <gasps> use of cannabis. This is what I'm saying, this was the, this was the one that they wanted to use in the court. Yeah, I know, they I know. didn't want Elax capacity, yeah, they didn't want that. Here we are, Mabar. Yeah, Dr. Back. Mabar, and I had a row with her, and that's the woman that's been contacted by the fucking court, right? And I'm sorry, I'm really sorry, mate, but you have got to start understanding what these people yeah, are doing yeah, to me. Uh, okay, uh, Ali Zubair knows, ask him. Ask him. What, what, what do you think about the claim, what they're saying there? The... No, that is wrong. They know, Zubair told me, he knows what I am, I'm bipolar affective disorder. But bipolar affective disorder does not help them in the courtroom. It proves I lack capacity, and therefore my, my, my time to bring a claim starts now. Six but, years so to bring a claim. So you don't feel depressed? You don't yes, feel... I feel depressed, I feel anxious. Look at my top, mate. I'm, every day, every day, as soon as I put a top on, sweat, drip, 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 drip. Right, these people are fucking, they're trying to ruin my mind, but they're not going to win. Anxiety, yeah. They're not going to win, they're not going to win. you want to go for some tests? No, what, what tests? I've had all the tests. Blood count, thyroid I asked for, No, I don't want all that. I asked, for, I asked for mental help 20 years ago. I said I want CBT. I took myself to Naysbury Court, mental health place, voluntary, twice. Any cough or weight loss? Uh, no, only a smoker's, only a smoker's cough. Do you want to go for an x-ray? 
No, I don't, I don't, no, I don't, this is just more stuff. I want you to understand what these people I are doing to my mind. Look, look, I, if, believe, I believe at that time they were convinced you had a delusional disorder. No, I'm not delusional. That's, that is convenient for the court. This is, this is what I'm telling you. But if, all right then, so is someone delusional, right? Do they have the capacity to bring their own to bring their own claim in a court in the dearest court case in UK uh, history? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they can bring a case. So it depends on how. What, well, whatever they're delusional, you can stand in the courtroom and bring a case. It depends on the degree of capacity that you need. Well, that that is wrong because my medical. Yeah, I, know, I, I believe you. I believe you. I'm you not saying that, but I'm not saying. and oh, depression. What I'm saying is that doctor has put that down. I know you, they have, and she's been corrupted. You don't seem delusional, or I'm not delusional. Or suicidal or anything like that. I'm not. I'm frustrated. I'm really frustrated. But, but, but as a doctor, I need to. Let I know you, know you do. I need I, to I, let you know that there are there are you know. You may need physical examination. Do you want me to do that? Listen to your chest. What are these sweats that you're having? Oh, don't make that's been happening since 1997 right, okay. when right. they publicly sacked me and got John Major, John Major, to stand in the Houses of Parliament, which was also set up, and say, ban his records, take him down. They ruined me. Research it, mate. 1997. Brian Harvey sacked. If you feel depressed, do you want to go back and see the uh, psychiatric team? No, because they're against me. I chased them all down the, down the corridor in the Ferguson Centre. They all run away from me. Because everyone's got this... They adopt this tone. It's a professional tone. And it doesn't work. They need to start treating people like human beings. All this, oh, I'm not talking to you because you're shouting. That's not helping. Yeah, look, look, you know, look, there's look, ruining look, people. Look, I can only sympathise with you. I can, I, the, the, the only reason I... One minute, please. The, 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 the only reason I wanted to speak to you today was because you said, you know, that um, you felt that people are trying to kill you. They are trying to kill me. I had a long conversation with a guy last night, six hours. Glenn, listen, let me tell you something. Glenn Mulcair came round my house, right? He's the one who's... He's the one who'd done the voicemail hacking on everyone, yeah. which is the one that started the whole thing. He came round my house three months ago, right? Yeah. Now, why has he come round? Because he's scared of the information that I've got, because I can tie him to Mazuma Mood, it's never been done. Peter Jukes, who live-tweeted the whole trial, has confirmed that. He came round my house as well. Saw all the evidence, agreed with me, went back to hacked off and said nothing. I know what's going on, right? I know what's going on. You've just, you've got to trust me. I'm not a madman. No, I have a condition, no. I have a condition that when I get bad news or something happens, I fall apart. But I'm in this on my own. I haven't got the police on my side. I've, con I've been contacting solicitors, knowing that they're all connected. You know, if, if Murdoch can pick the phone up to the Attorney General, right, what chance have I got? So I've got to go out there now, standing and screaming, looking like a complete nutcase outside Downing Street, knowing everyone's going to slag me off for it, but I'm right. What would you do? Now I feel like my daughter's in danger, right? I'm in danger. I'm in danger. But can you not go to a different police force? No. They're all in on it. I had Wiltshire police come round. Do you, all right, this is really deep, but I'm going to tell you something, all right? all right? They went this far. This is how far they went. January 2014. Mm. I contacted a, an anti-child abuse activist. I said, I'm not doing nothing with my life. I love what you're doing. Let me come and film your interviews for you. I've got a free camera set up. I'll do two over the shoulders and a wide. Let me film them for you. You're doing an important thing. He's up in the politicians' faces. As it happens now, I know the geezer's an agent. He's a liar. He was there to discredit the victims. I was taken to Holt because I wanted to help. And I filmed Operation Fernbridge's chief witness. I can give you all the videos, I can give you everything. This is how deep they, they, they went to discredit me. They took me to Hull. I filmed Andrew Ash, Google him, Andrew Ash, Oper Operation Fernbridge's chief witness. Right? The Express were there filming it. And this geezer is the bloke who made the allegation about Leon Britton. Right? Okay. Not a birthmark. His name's Andrew Ash. Right. right, he was Operation Fernbridge's chief witness. Now, there's a whole backstory going on there with, with why they've let him talk to the likes of this child, a, a child abuse activist. Mm. But I was there for two days and I've got three hour long interviews with this guy where he's talking about Leon Britton and Edwina Curry and all of the BBC are all involved in a massive paedophile ring. Right? right. Right, now I started investigating this and I gave, I compiled a one terabyte drive of evidence and I gave it all to um, Operation U Tree. I've had them round, I've had Special Branch round, mm. I've had Operation Fernbridge, I've had Operation Fairbank. Now, also, you involved those police forces? Yeah, of course I have. And I had to force all of these people to come round. 
right? Because all of these people on the inside know that that Andrew Ash interview was set up for me because they thought I was a loose cannon. And once I saw the story, I was there on Friday, filmed it. It went on the front page of the Express Sunday, the uh, Sunday, the 12th of, of January 2014. Right? Front page Express, I filmed it. I've got all the footage, I'll give it to you. Did you, so want, that, okay. Did you want to see your mental health team? In I case somebody know. says, just, just to show, that you're not delusional. I know I'm not delusional. You don't? I know I'm not delusional. Zoo Bear knows I'm not delusional. Everyone knows I'm not delusional. I'm not going to let that one... That woman needs suing. That woman that done that, and she and I've got her on tape admitting, well, yes, we had a call. Oh, you had a call, so you did have a call. Alright, I thought not delusion at present. No thoughts of harming anybody else? No, I'm not harming no one else. I, you know, I'm, not, I'm angry, I'm frustrated, and I'm going <coughs> through it all on my own inside myself. Do you want to go for counselling? Ring a number? No, that doesn't work. Look, alright, look. No, when you, well, I mean, my, my, my circumstances are weird anyway. I'm this person who's famous, but I've got no money, and I'm getting, I'm getting fucked over by everyone, and they've made it. This is this is part of the game, mate. This is part of the game. Please believe me. Believe you. Please believe me. This is part of their game. The idea is to frustrate me yeah. beyond anything to, I've ever known. You need to get away from these people. I'm trying to, mate, but I'm stuck. I haven't cut, mate. Do you know honestly? I didn't come out my house for two years. Do you understand that? Mm. I couldn't cut. I ain't come out my house for two years. I saw that documentary about you. You know when you were in the hospital. Yeah. You were with a lady at the time. Emma, yeah, that, that, that ended like after that, once I, once I got better and that. We so just... you were alone at the moment then? Um, no, I've, I've had a partner, but we've just split up as well. Yeah. Oh, okay. so... Look, I want you to ring, think about it. Ring right. this referral line, it's for counselling. Yeah. Informal counselling. Informal. Yeah. All right. All right, thank you. All right. Oh, yeah, yeah. We, um, what's going to happen with the, the, the benefits thing? You have to contact them if you and then. Well, no, because what's name was writing a letter. What yeah, yeah, happened? yeah. I'm going to talk to you. They about double, but they double booked me. They, yeah. I, I was booked here. Yeah, I, I know. And I'll, I'll sort that out. On can Wednesday. you please sort that out? I will. I'm seeing you again on Wednesday. Aren't I? Do you want me to come again Wednesday? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah? I've got to do that for you. This was just to make sure that you're not delusional. Okay, no, I'm not delusional, mate. And that you're not a risk to yourself. That's why. How can I put that down in front of Doctor Mabar and she say, "Look, you're a delusional disorder. Look at that. Look, it's, it's there." I think, I think it was. What do you think? I went and made all this up. I think it was because at the time you probably were. Taking drugs. I was smoking weed. That's right. So when you're smoking weed, they immediately think. I know they do. I know. I know. But you're saying you're I not know. smoking weed, so you can't be. All right. I'll Occasionally, you. I'm not going to lie to you. Mm, okay. I, I'm going to. I'm going to lie to you. I don't have to lie to you. I smoke weed, but it's only because I know everyone's going to frown upon it. They're going to go, "Oh, it's because of this. It's because of that." It's not. I would be. Uh, let me tell you something really straight from me to you. I would be dead if I hadn't smoked weed. I promise you. But the, what it does to my mind, I've had all your antidepressants, I've had your citalopram, your sertraline, your propanolol, uh, your, your zopiclones, your, um, what was the other one? Phloxetine. Uh, your uh, uh, Right. I've had all of these. They don't work, mate. Right. right? They don't work. They don't work. Right, right. You need to get to the, okay. to the root right. of the Keep problem. Keep the appointment for Wednesday and we'll sort out your benefits then. Yeah, I'll do the letter. Thank you. Yeah, all right. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate. Don't forget it. your phone. And, and I, 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 I do appreciate how it looks and how it sounds. No, I know. I, I, I would like. Is there an email that I can have so that I can just provide you some evidence of what I'm saying? No, no, no. We, we don't want to use that. We don't want to use that. It this is well, this is what I'm saying because this is one more condition. No, no, no. That, that's that's gonna that's gonna that's gonna make it more complicated. And, and, think, and, and emails can be seen by other people. That's but do you believe me? I believe you. I believe you. Thank I just you. wanted to make sure Thank you. Thank that you, you were like a risk to yourself. No, I'm not a risk to me or anyone else. I'm not going to go around and sit and knife and someone or do anything. Man, I'm not. I'm, a, I'm okay. That's why I wanted to check today. But inside is how... What is I understand, the, I understand it's that. Crippling, it's crippling, but, but that's anyway. why I wanted to see you to make sure that was the case. Okay. Okay. Dr. Thank, Thank you very okay. much. Thank, Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you. I'm not fucking having that. Now, you, when you left, you told me they was going to fucking stitch you up and they was going to stitch me up. How was they going to stitch me up? I want to know. Stop fucking about with me. No, they were going to... It was me I was telling you about because they, I thought they were going to say that, you know, if you leave, it was my fault.